Okay, so so this time we are going to um, talk about some new topic. So we are going to talk about um, so-called ADM formalism of general relativity. Uh, so uh, we so we have finished uh, the discussion about some specific solutions uh, of Einstein equations. So we are just to jump out um, from details of solutions um, back to uh, formalism. Okay. So here, this ADM form formalism is a um, Hamiltonian formalism uh, of gravity of general relativity. Hamiltonian formulation. Of gravity, yeah. and here this ADM, uh, it's name, uh, it's a three, 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 uh, the name of three person. Okay. And so it's uh, Anovic, and Gasser. And Nicola. And, and these three fellows um, work out this formalism, work out the Hamiltonian of general relativity. Okay, so <clears throat> how to do uh, this uh, Hamiltonian formulation? So, I mean, uh, as I, I, I'm sure all of you have learned classical mechanics, you know, in classical mechanics, you can write down your Lagrangian, and then uh, using this Lagrangian, and you, you um, define the conjugate momentum corresponding to the configuration variable, and then you write your Lagrangian in terms of those um, uh, configuration variable and momentum p and q, and and then uh, you can extract the Hamiltonian okay, of of um, of the system from from your Lagrangian. Okay, and here the game is 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 just the same. It, we follow basically the same scheme, but we apply this Lagrangian for for uh, general relativity for gravity. Okay, and um, okay. So here, uh, our action of gravity uh, is, is so-called Einstein-Hilbert action. We have discussed about it. It's one over kappa integral on the four-dimensional manifold r minus p lambda square root minus p d four x. Okay, and so uh, as I discussed, as we discussed before. And so this is the bulk term of uh, uh, Einstein-Hilbert action, and you have to add a uh, boundary term to make it well defined. Uh, especially to make the variational principle well defined, you have to add another term, which is Gibbons-Hawking boundary term. So this is the boundary term. Yeah, this is something we discussed before, and then uh, you use this action, you perform the variational principle. Zero and this gives you the Einstein equation. This is something we we did uh, before. Okay, so so this is uh, something we studied before. Okay, so now um, what we want to do is to extract Hamiltonian and extract the conjugate uh, momentum variable and and also configuration var configuration variable from from this uh, action. And also extract a Hamiltonian from this action. So here now, uh, what we want to do, we want we want to write this Lagrangian in the following uh, form. We want to have have this Einstein-Hilbert action to be uh, of to be this kind of um, uh, type. To write it as a PQ dot minus a Hamiltonian. Okay, to write this uh, Lagrangian into this kind of formalism. Um, so, so once we can, we are able to write in this form. So, a, a good thing about it is is that um, in the end of this analysis, uh, we can reformulate Einstein equation in terms of uh, Hamilton's equation. Okay, so that Einstein equation. Um, can be cast 
into uh, Hamilton's equation. Namely, um, Q dot equals to partial H partial P and P dot is minus partial H partial Q. Okay, this is the standard Hamilton's equation. So we want to write Einstein equation in this kind of format. So <clears throat> a good thing of, um, well, as you learn in, in classical mechanics, you know, um, this kind of Hamilton's equation is nice because uh, it transforms a second order differential equation into first order differential equation. But now, of course, you get more variables. You get uh, momentum variable um, uh, in addition to, to Q. Okay, so here, um, as we learn, Einstein equation is a second order differential equation. So here, basically, this kind of analysis help you to, to write a second or second order differential equation to first order differential equation. And it's uh, the, so we can formulate this uh, system uh, in terms of initial value problem. Okay, so we, we are, we can simply find the initial values and or initial conditions and the initial conditions is just a point uh, of phase space and the phase space is the space of P and Q's as in classical mechanics and the initial condition is just a point uh, in phase space and then the uh, time evolution following the Hamilton's equation is just a trajectory, give you a trajectory in, in your phase space starting from the initial point. Okay. So, so here um, uh, some key point is that, so I mean the reason why we need this Hamilton, uh, Hamilton's uh, equation or Hamiltonian formulation of gravity is uh, twofold. Uh, so firstly, uh, we need it because we, uh, we want uh, we want an initial, initial value formulation of gravity. So let, let me put this as motivation. motivation. So we need a initial, an initial formulation, initial value formulation. of CR, okay? And this is uh, very useful, especially nowadays in numerical relativity and studying gravitational waves. And um, what one has to do is, is put this uh, Hamilton's equation for, for gravity in, in computer and uh, specify the initial values and let this equation evolve. Right? And this is uh, computational, uh, computationally convenient. And, and secondly, um, we, these Hamilton, Hamiltonian formulation is necessary to do the quantization. Uh, needed, needed for, for quantization. Okay, so because uh, we know that um, quantum mechanics, what quantum mechanics does is is to quantize the Hamiltonian formalism of, uh, of particle mechanics. Okay, so we have, uh, considering a particle, we have, like, we have to have a Hamiltonian, and then we quantize this Hamiltonian and plug in the Schrodinger equation, right? So definitely, before the quantization, we have to have a Hamiltonian. Yeah. So that's why we, we need to suppose we want to quantize gravity, we have to uh, firstly find the Hamiltonian formalism of of gravity. Okay, so these are two uh, motivations, right? Um, so one observation, let me put, uh, so there is a one observation. One observation is that, uh, so Hamiltonian formalism, so, so Hamiltonian, so uh, to do the Hamiltonian formalism, uh, we need we need to uh, specify the time. Specify a time. Let's call it time t. So, so here the reason that, for example, in uh, because we want to write uh, Einstein-Hilbert action into this p q dot minus h. So here there is something called q dot, yeah, and this q dot definitely depend on the choice of time. Okay, so which means that to in order to define this Hamiltonian formalism, we need to firstly specify a specific time, right? So this means that we need a so-called three plus one decomposition of space time. Um, 
of three times. Okay, so uh, be, remember that um, before we talk when we talk about uh, general relativity, we say that um, uh, general relativity uh, is, is the point of general relativity is uh, coordinate independent. Uh, coordinate transformation is the gauge transformation of, of gravity. So uh, all the physics it doesn't depend on choice of coordinate. But in this case, um, we are going to uh, break this uh, gauge invariant a little bit in order to develop this Hamiltonian formula. So this is a, a special speciality of uh, of general relativity or of gravity. Is that although the um, uh, coordinate transformation is um, is gauge transformation, uh, but in order to develop this Hamiltonian formula, we have to sort of uh, fix the, at least fix the time coordinate. Yeah, we have to fix a time t. Uh, so once we fix the coordinate, of course, we break this gauge uh, this gauge freedom. But we sort of we have to do that for for um, Hamilton in order to develop the Hamiltonian formula. Okay. So here, what is the three plus one decomposition? So uh, firstly, we have to assume the background manifold structure uh, M equals R cross sigma. Okay. And here, this R is the time flow, and sigma is our space. So here, the three plus one decomposition uh, for the background manifold. Uh, is that we have to decompose the manifold into a time direction and the space direction. And the dimension of uh, space is three. In our case, we always consider four dimensional general relativity. So the dimension of sigma is three. So um, in, in the figure, uh, so we consider the, if the plot is more or less like this. Yeah, so these are all space. So this is called a foliation of space time. Yeah, so this is called foliation. Foliation of the space time. It means that you consider that space time is a uh, made by spatial slices, a lot of spatial slice slices, but these spatial slices is parametrized by uh, by t being the time. And so the t coordinate axis is like, uh, I mean, it's, it's kind of arbitrary flowing from the past to the future. So you view this, well, this is actually, I'm drawing it's a tangent vector. I call it TA. Yeah, so this, uh, let me say, let me put this. Well, um, well, firstly, draw the coordinate line T. This is the coordinate line. And and then, uh, then at every point, there's a tangent vector. This tangent vector is called TA, okay? Um, Okay, so this TA is just a partial partial T, okay, uh, in our notation, okay. And this is, uh, so here what I'm drawing is a space-time M, and we consider this space-time has a matrix DAB, okay, and this uh, manifold is, is foliated. And and then uh, because we have the spatial slice, we have uh, we have the time direction. So this TA can be decomposed by by using the uh, spaces, right? And by using uh, at least the the normal vector of of the spatial slice. So because once we have the hypersurface sigma T, so we can we know uh, we have a normal vector. Yeah, we have the matrix. We have the hypersurface. We have a normal vector. And Therefore, we can we can some uh, decompose this TA by the components, certain components of NA, and also certain components projected on this on the uh, spatial slice. Okay, so here this TA TA can be written in terms of um, a linear combination of NA with coefficients what I call N, yeah, plus. N a, okay, and this N a is a projection of T a um, onto the uh, spatial slice, okay, and this N, this is called lapse function. Okay, let me put here N is called N is a function. So all everything is a vector field. All the quantity in this equation is are are uh, vector field. Yeah, so it depends on space and time. Yeah, so what I'm drawing here is just a vector field located at one point, the vector. 
So, so this n is called lap function. It's called lap function. And this na is called shift vector. It's called shift vector. All right. Uh, so here, this na is tangent. Tangent to sigma. Okay. This ten is na is tangent to sigma. Okay. And here na na equals to minus one. Yeah. So here we um, this na is uh, so called normalized uh, normal vector. It's a normalized. Okay. Um, all right. So now, uh, suppose we we consider a coordinate system. Coordinate system. So let's call it a T. X one, X two, X three. Okay. And I view this is so here. This T is definitely the time coordinate and. And this x1, x2, 3 is coordinate on sigma. 